Guys, this is the S&P 500 weekly technical analysis for the week of March 25th. That is from March 25th, which is Monday, to March 28th, that will be Thursday. So March 29th is the holiday. Now what we are seeing here is that the S&P 500 managed to breach the previous all-time high and it moved into the 5-2-X-X range. And all of this happened because of the press conference of the Federal Reserve Chairman and also because of these the SCPs or the projections. Now the S&P 500 has reached into the zone wherein it just have to cross or it just have to breach one resistance level and then it will be moving towards 5300. And at the same time it is not just the S&P 500 but also the Dow Jones. Because Dow Jones is now struggling to clear one of the heavy resistances and there are two closings or two rejections from that the resistance. So until and unless there comes a closing above the resistance the S&P 500 will give or will try to give a bullish movement but that will be limited. However if the S&P 500 as well as Dow Jones if they keep on struggling or if there comes rejections back to back 3, 4 or 5. In that case, uh, there will be very little possibility for any more bullish movement for now and it can come down and then it will try to sustain at these the moving averages and then it can try again. Now the most interesting and the most important thing that has happened last week was the press conference and the projections. In the press conference, there were two things. Number one, that Feds will go for three rate cuts or Feds will give three rate cuts this year. Secondly, there might not come any more rate hike. And also in the projections, as you can see that Feds are projecting that the federal funds rate will be 4.6 by the end of this year, means three rate cuts, then 3.6 by the end of the 2025, means in the entire year there will be only four rate cuts. Then in 2026, there might come two or three rate cuts. Anyways, I will talk more about these the bullish and bearish conditions, the Fed's fund rate and its implications. However, if we look into the movement in the stock market, then the movement is simply unidirectional. It is bullish. That is why. That is why we are calling it as a bubble. So guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. Now guys, I am going to discuss the agenda of this S&P 500 weekly technical analysis. The first point of the agenda is the S&P 500 technical analysis on the weekly chart. So weekly chart is the big picture, the long term picture, okay, for a quarter, for a month, for two months or so, okay. Now the most important part here is that on the weekly chart there is a very heavy bullish candle and as I mentioned in my previous uh, S&P 500 weekly technical analysis and in last two months that the S&P 500 is continuously trading in the overbought in the overbought and heavily saturated conditions for last two months or more okay and now because of the formation of this heavy bullish candle this condition has or the overbought or saturated okay it has further increased so in this the first point of the agenda i will show you the charts the weekly charts of the s p 500 and the dow jones then comes the second point of the agenda and the second point of the agenda is the s p 500 technical analysis on the daily chart so daily chart means the short term picture for a week for a month maximum okay or for two three days now on the daily chart you can clearly see that the S&P 500 has breached this is the previous all time high it moved up okay and as of now it looks like that it is coming down this means that even if it comes down then also it can come down at most to this the previous this is the all time high and it is not expected to come down heavily okay there will be some conditions when it can come down heavily however when it comes down then it is expected to sustain and then we can anticipate a reversal so there will be conditions for the bullish and the bearish movement and i will show you these conditions on the daily chart one more thing that on the daily chart macd macd in both the snp 500 and the dow jones is now aligned bullish okay now the third point of the agenda is the probable movement of the snp 500 from march 25th to march 28th so in this the third point of the agenda i will tell you that what we are expecting to happen in the entire us stock market in the coming week and this will be a short week only four days so guys i am going to begin with the first point of the agenda that is the s p 500 technical analysis on the weekly chart 
Now guys, I am going to discuss the first point of the agenda of this S&P 500 weekly technical analysis. And here in this the first point of the agenda, I will do the technical analysis of the S&P 500 on the weekly chart. This is the weekly chart. Okay, let me write it down. W as in weekly. Okay, weekly chart. So weekly chart means one candle represents one week, not one day or one hour. One candle means one week. Okay. Now in my previous S&P 500 weekly technical analysis, I've shown you that in case of the S&P 500 and also in case of the Dow Jones, there were these the weekly candles and these weekly candles formed in a technical bullish condition. However, the closing was below the 50% mark means there was pressure. But because both of these indices on the weekly chart have closed in a technical bullish condition, this means that either we are going to see a gap up open or irrespective of any open, there will be an initial bullish movement. However, because of the candles formed on the daily charts, the chances of seeing a gap up open were not much or were not confirmed. But yes, what was confirmed is that if there comes a gap down open, okay, gap down open because of the pressure, then also there will be an initial bullish movement on Monday, the last week. Now, let's talk about this, the last weekly candle. So now this is the last weekly candle. It's a heavy bullish candle, clearly a heavy bullish candle. Okay. As you can see here also in the Dow Jones, a heavy bullish candle. However, the important point is that the closing of the candle is not at the peak of the candle. Okay. The closing of the candle is not at the peak of the candle. Rather, there was a rejection, not just one rejection. There were two rejections. Okay, in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. This means that on Monday, a gap up open is not confirmed. On Monday, a gap up open is not confirmed. Okay, and yes, on Monday, it is not confirmed that there will be an initial bullish movement irrespective of anything because the closing was like this. Uh, however, uh, the Dow Jones, okay, it gave a very good or very heavy uh, red candle on the daily chart. Okay, so that is the reason. But these candles in the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones indicates indicates that there are bullish sentiments in the market. Okay, the market is sustaining bullish. Okay, this means that even if the S&P 500 comes down, even if the Dow Jones it comes down, then also these indices are expected to sustain. Rather than giving a heavy bearish movement, these indices are expected to sustain. Right means any bearish side movement is expected to be limited not heavy but a limited and then we will have to see how the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones performs at their respective these the heavy support levels or heavy support zones there are actually the zones if the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones sustains survives and gives closings above these above the zone then definitely any fall will be limited and also then there will be a reversal means the bullish retrace in the market the continuation of the bullish movement okay so this is what these the candles are indicating now there is one more thing or one interesting thing here if you notice the movement of the s p 500 okay it is a very heavy unidirectional movement it was supposed to come down to here and then a bullish movement and then it was supposed to come down here and then a bullish movement and then okay this is the natural flow of the stock market but what you are seeing here this is not the natural flow okay that is why we are calling it as bubble and once again this is a tech bubble plus depth bubble so there are two bubbles not one but two there are two bubbles okay now let's see what the technical indicators are saying on this the weekly chart so in terms of the technical indicators, okay, nothing much have changed. Uh, yes, things were about to change, but because of um, the dovish comments of the Federal Reserve Chairman, okay, and uh, on that day, whatever happened has changed everything. MACD is clearly bullish, heavily bullish, okay. Moving averages, heavy fan out, and the S&P 500 is sustaining through all of the technical indicators. At the same time, the S&P 500 is in over. Uh, bought condition from uh, May sorry from uh, January okay so it's been two months it's been two months the S&P 500 is trading in the overbought condition on the weekly chart and this itself okay this is very very significant that the S&P 500 is somehow sustaining for more than two months okay on this uh, in this the overbought condition on the weekly chart okay this is very very rare, this is very rare condition okay other than that the S&P 500 is saturated and it is saturated for almost 
for the same time okay so what it indicates this indicates or this confirms this confirms that yes indeed the market is in the bubble there is clearly a bubble okay bubble in the entire stock market okay and also the S&P 500 is 100 percent bullish okay this is naturally what happens whenever the market goes in bubble okay it always remains 100 percent bullish as well as overbought as well as saturated it remains in these conditions for a significant period of time okay and when the bubble bursts, then it simply reverses 100 percent absolute bearish absolute oversold and absolute saturated in the bearish side so there comes very heavy 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 candles okay so absolute bullish absolute overbought and saturated on the weekly chart now if you see on this the uh, weekly chart of the dow jones almost the same condition but down but looks like that the dow jones was trying that the dow jones was trying to give the natural movement or the natural uh, or it was trying to move into the natural flow of the stock market but because of the heavy very heavy extremely heavy bullish sentiments okay manipulation or uh, extremely heavy FOMOing or whatever whatever you say okay this the market was moving up and that is why the dow jones was moving up okay now if you see technically the dow jones on the weekly chart is yes the macd of the dow jones was about to give a bearish crossover for the first time after november october november okay uh, but because of this heavy bullish candle we have seen that it is sustaining and it has not given a clear there is the crossover okay uh, other than that looks like it is forming a slip and if the slip forms truly forms in that case what will happen in that case there will come more bullish movement and also because of the formation of this the heavy bullish candle the s &P, the dow jones is back into the overbought condition and also in the saturated condition okay uh, the only bearish factor here is the stochastic rsi otherwise the dow jones is sustaining bullish this means that on the weekly chart the dow jones is 80 percent bullish on the weekly chart 80 percent bullish and it is overbought and it is saturated but it is not overbought or saturated as much as the s p 500 is s p 500 is absolute overbought and absolute saturated and if you notice that in my pre-market update to my patreon community members almost every day okay i mentioned this the this particular change means when this a fluctuation was seen in the market and it was clear that s p 500 is absolute saturated and absolute overbought and the Dow Jones is also in the same condition, but the Dow Jones is 80% bullish, not 100% bullish. Only the zones will define whether the movement will remain bullish or bearish. And guys, I have one more information to share with you that I have this the stock market knowledge transfer program. Through this program, I teach the movement strategies and analysis, trend, predictions, technicals, support and resistance levels and much more. And uh, the motto of the program is to help you become self-reliant. And also this program is delivered one-on-one -on -one basis. And whatever I am going to share or whatever I am going to teach through this program will be applicable to any stock, any index, any currency or any commodity or crypto, everything. Because the concepts, basics and the technical, they remain same for everything. So, and this is my email address. Whenever you want to participate in this the program, then you can simply drop me an email. And this is the Google spreadsheet. More details are there in this the Google spreadsheet. And this is the Google spreadsheet and everything is mentioned, including the options, the basics, the options advanced, and the options trading calculator, strategies, calculator support and resistance levels, how to analyze the trend of the market, how to predict the price even or how to predict the movement even before it happens short term hacks long term hacks etc and other than that these are the terms and conditions very very simple terms and conditions and um, these are the snapshots of the meetings and uh, this is my email address whenever you want to participate in this program you can simply drop me an email i have given the link to this program in the description of the video and also in the comment section now guys, I am going to discuss the second point of the agenda of this S&P 500 weekly technical analysis. And here in the second point of the agenda, I will do the technical analysis of the S&P 500 on the daily chart. This is the daily chart. Daily chart means one candle represents one day. Now before I proceed further, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
And if you are looking for these the daily and the precise updates of the S&P 500 from Monday through Friday, then you can join my Patreon community. I have given the link in the description of the video and also in the comment section. So uh, now comes the candle. If you look into this, the candle, last candle, it's a bearish candle, clearly a good bearish candle, but it's not a heavy bearish candle. Okay. There was very limited movement on Friday. And the S&P 500, not just on Friday, but also on Thursday, it moved exactly the range that I have mentioned to my Patreon community members through these updates, the daily updates. And this was, and this was because there was a very heavy resistance level. And also at the same time, there were very heavy bullish sentiments. So resistance level, it was creating pressure. The bullish sentiments were keeping it bullish. That is why we have seen on these two days, very limited movement. So now this is the last bearish candle is simply indicating some bearish pressure, but not heavy bearish pressure, but some, some bearish pressure. That's it. Nothing else. And if you look into the last bearish candle of the Dow Jones, then yes, this is truly a heavy bearish candle and this is indicating good bearish pressure. So bearish pressure or good or good or heavy bearish pressure in the Dow Jones. And some bearish pressure in the S&P 500 indicates that on Monday, we can anticipate an initial bearish movement in the market. An initial downward movement or an initial bearish movement in the market. However, any kind of bearish movement in the market is expected to be limited. It is expected to be limited and not heavy. Not heavy. Okay. Because of the zones and because of the conditions that are there in the market. Now let's talk about the technicals. In terms of the technicals, if you notice, uh, clear fan out, moving averages, nothing, okay. And uh, and in last uh, few days, not few days, but last two or three weeks, we have seen very rough movement in the MACD. And again, and recently we have seen again the S&P 500, uh, sorry, the MACD of the S&P 500 has given a bullish crossover. And the stochastic RSI is also bullish. As well as the technicals on the daily chart are, are turning into the saturation and in the over uh, bought condition right so on the daily chart it is it is very very much clear that the S&P 500 is is absolute bullish and is heading to the absolute overbought and the saturation now when the S&P 500 now well, let's say that there comes one more bullish candle or two bullish candles okay uh, or two green candles, simple two green candles. Then what will happen? The S&P 500 will enter into the overbought and the saturated condition on the daily chart. And because it is already in the absolute overbought and um, saturated condition, absolute saturation on the uh, weekly chart. This means that weekly chart and the daily chart. These although although this chart will say that the S&P 500 is absolute bullish. But at the same time, these two will come under a very heavy pressure and this can result in some good bearish movement, maybe like this or, you know, this kind of bearish movement. And this movement is expected to be intraday only, okay, only for one day, maximum one or maximum two days, okay, not much. Anyways, whatever will happen, whatever will be happening, I will keep you posted through these the daily and the precise updates of the S&P 500. And uh, guys, if you also want to join my Patreon community in order to get these uh, daily and the precise updates of the S&P 500 from Monday through Friday, then I've given the link in the description of the video and also in the comment section. And also guys, this is, and also guys, it is not just about these, the daily and the precise updates of the S&P 500, but I also give these the stock market opportunities in the premium stocks of the US stock market. And when you follow the link which I've given in the description of the video and also in the comment section to join the Patreon community, then you will see that this is my Patreon page and this is my Patreon profile. And here on my Patreon page, you will notice that there are these are two tiers. This one is daily S&P 500 updates for non-US and Canada residents. This is the daily S&P 500 updates for US and Canada residents only. So whenever you subscribe to either of these, you will be getting the daily S&P 500 analysis updates and the probable movement each and every day Monday through Friday as well as the stock market opportunities minimum 5 to 10 every week in the premium stocks of the US stock market 
एंड गाइस इफ यू नोटिस दैट मैनी पीपल हैव ज्वाइन माय पैट्रियन कम्युनिटी फॉर लास्ट मैनी डेज वीक्स मंथ्स इयर्स एंड दे आर गेटिंग दिस डेली एंड द प्रिसाइस अपडेट्स ऑफ द एस एन पी फाइव हंड्रेड फ्रॉम मंडे थ्रू फ्राइडे एज वेल एज द स्टॉक मार्केट अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन द प्रीमियम स्टॉक्स ऑफ द यू एस स्टॉक मार्केट सो गाइस वेन एवर यू वॉन्ट टू जॉइन माई पैट्रियन कम्युनिटी आई हैव गिवन द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द वीडियो एंड ऑल्सो इन द कमेंट सेक्शन यू कैन फॉलो द लिंक एंड यू कैन जॉइन माई पैट्रियन कम्युनिटी एंड यू आर वेलकम Now, guys, I am going to discuss the third and the last point of the agenda of this S and P 500 weekly technical analysis. And here, I will give you the probable movement of the S and P 500 from March 25th, which is Monday, to March 28th. And that will be Thursday, and Friday will be the holiday. Okay. So before that, you need to understand that from March 25th to March 28th. uh there is no significant economic data is going to be published however on march 29th friday the core pce the pce and the core pc data will be published but because 29th is the holiday this means that the impact of this data will be felt on uh, on the monday of the next to next week okay that is why the next week uh, can be considered as blank uh, yes there will be some economic data okay that will be published but because recently the federal reserve chairman has confirmed a lot of things so what we have seen is that the federal reserve chairman was saying or has said everything that he has said earlier okay however what we knew initially within 5 to 10 minutes is that the body language and the tone of the federal reserve chairman it looks dovish it was dovish and when i posted this comment that time the s&p 500 was around 5180 but there was one more very important point and that was that he said that the recent surge in inflation okay recent bullish reversal of bullish movement in the inflation data is okay and acceptable so each and everything that he has said that has confirmed that the federal reserve chairman said exactly what what the wall street was expecting now in terms of the numbers what we know is that as of now any fall any kind of fall in the s&p 500 is expected to be limited to 5190/92 okay now what is this the 5190 5190 is uh, there's the previous all time high uh, although it was 5189.26 but it was the previous all time high and what is 5192 5192 is my calculated level okay this level i have disclosed in the previous s&p 500 weekly technical analysis so 5190.92 it's a small zone very small zone only 3 point zone 3 point zone however this is a very strong zone this is a very strong support zone and you can see that for more than a week the s&p 500 was struggling to clear the zone and only and only because of the help of or help from the federal reserve chairman the s&p 500 was able to breach this the zone and manage to close above the zone so what it means this means that now this is going to act as very strong support zone for the s&p 500 any fall will be limited to the zone itself and that's it now now comes the second condition this is the first condition okay the first condition is that any fall will be limited limited to what limited to 5190/92 okay if the s&p 500 sustains here at this the zone means closing it may happen that intraday it can come down okay but at in like 3 3:30 pm candle okay or intraday any time it can reverse and it can give a closing so the closing will be important if the s&p 500 keeps on closing above the zone in that case it can move up further okay further towards 5300 or so okay but if it gives up if it gives one two two consecutive closings below the zone remember two consecutive closings below the zone in that case expect more fall more and more fall in that case there is a zone there is a zone uh, and this and that zone is a 10 point zone okay again and again the s&p 500 has sustained at that zone and it has moved up so that is a 10 pointer zone or the 10 point 10 point zone any fall from 5190/92 will be handled by that zone okay in between these two there is one good support level okay but it will then depend because if there comes two consecutive closings then the pressure will 
then the pressure will grow or the pressure will be heavy and in that case the S&P 500 can be forced to come down to that particular zone so that it can sustain okay but remember two consecutive closings it, uh, it must not be like that on Monday there is a closing below the zone but on Tuesday the closing is above the zone no okay you can clearly see two closings two closings above the zone okay that is why I am saying that any fall is expected to be limited to the zone okay if it comes down then this 10 point zone will be able to handle the fall okay and yes there will be one more thing if the S&P 500 gives up the 519092 in that case it will also indicate that that whatever the Federal Reserve Chairman has said or whatever the projections have confirmed that the interest rates will remain higher for longer for next three years so the Wall Street has started to take on that seriously and that is why it is coming down and S&P 500 is trading below 5190-92 otherwise it was not possible uh, and uh, and we can say that at this point of the time it will be like 70% clear okay that yes this is indeed okay this is the case and this is happening once it loses this the 10 pointer zone then this will be 100% confirmed that okay now the Wall Street is seriously considering the aspects that the uh, these the aspects or these, these the conditions that the interest rate rates will remain higher for longer uh, for next three or four years or at least until 2026 okay interest rates will remain okay at these um, some these the high levels or these the peak levels now comes the bullish part or the bullish movement okay so uh, in terms of the bullish movement what we know is that for any bullish movement to happen the S&P 500 must sustain and survive at or above 5190-92 zone okay this is the only condition as long as S&P 500 is sustaining at 5190-92 zone it will remain bullish it can it can move up further okay now to what levels it can move up clearly 5300 okay that will be there in the picture okay if the S&P 500 sustains at 5190-92 however there is a problem the problem is there because of the Dow Jones because there is a zone around 39,800 approximately okay and until and unless the Dow Jones moves up and gives two closings two consecutive closings above this the heavy resistance mark there will not be any kind of good bullish movement so why I am saying good bullish movement I'm saying because a bullish movement can happen not a problem okay the S&P 500 can even breach just like what it did okay on 21st of March but the problem is the closing there must come a closing on and not one because these are two consecutive two successive rejections putting the downward pressure on the entire US stock market so we need two consecutive closings in case of the Dow Jones above 30, 39,800 approximately I will give the exact number to my patreon community members okay so we need two consecutive closings if that happens if there comes two consecutive closings then only there will be a movement to or towards 5300 in the S&P 500 okay however if the Dow Jones remains under pressure remains below this mark 38800 approximately okay keeps closing not uh, remains means closing okay if it keeps on closing below this the mark then any bullish movement in the S&P 500 will be limited to the resistance level that is there a very heavy resistance level okay just on and around that the resistance level the S&P 500 can try to move otherwise okay it will remain or any bullish movement in the S&P 500 will be limited or will be very very limited okay so what it means this means that if the Dow Jones struggles fails and uh, fails to give up two consecutive closings okay but at the same time it comes down and sustains then the for these the four days okay Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday until March 28th the S&P 500 will be seen trading in between these two levels the zone and the resistance mark that's it and nothing else or you can say approximately 1.5 percent to 2 percent movement in the S&P 500 for the entire week just up down up down or so that's it nothing else but whatever will happen whatever will be happening 
I will keep you posted through these are daily and the precise updates of the S&P 500 from Monday through Friday to my Patreon community members. And if you have not yet joined my Patreon community, then I've given the link in the description of the video and also in the comment section, you can join my Patreon community. Uh, and guys, um, hit like if you like this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. So guys, this was my S&P 500 weekly technical analysis for the week of March 25th means from March 25th which is Monday to March 28th that will be Thursday.